In this video, I will be explaining the investment in debt instrument and particularly we are focusing on whether there's a change in the business model or how we can determine that business model if I were to uh, classify or reclassify the investment in debt instrument. But first of all, let me explain what do I mean by investment in debt instrument. Investment means buy. You are buying debt as the instrument because instrument means you've got a contract. You are buying debt, which means, okay, a company wants money, wants to borrow money, and it issues debt instrument, it issues debt, and then you buy it. Because you are buying it, to you, you can use that instrument, which means you can use that contract to earn interest from my side. Okay? And that means you are the buyer. And we are talking about the financial assets here. We are talking about from a buyer's point of view of how we should account for it. And of course, it really depends on uh, two tests according to the... Um, according to the IFRS 9 financial, uh, financial instrument. The first test that we're going to see will be in the bottom, in red. If you see that, it's the solely payment of principal and interest. So what do I mean by principal is the total money that you can get on this face value. So for example, I buy this bond at the end of the third year, I can get $100 back, which means the money that I input in the first place. Interest means as time goes by I can get the interest expense from you to compensate for my opportunity costs that I lend this money to you in the first place. And that means it's called the SPPI test which means the solely payment of principal and interest or SPPI test. In essence it's just to be to test your cash flows your cash flows where not it includes the time value of money stuff. And if the answer for that is yes, the investment in debt, I can either classify it as the uh, using amortized costs or fair value through OCI or other comprehensive income. Okay? And of course, if the answer for that is no, so for example, you are buying the convertible bond, You've got an option to convert into shares at some point in the future, which means the cash flow from the contract will not only include the time value of money stuff, but other bits and pieces. If it includes other bits and pieces, of course, you have to classify the investment in debt into fair value through PL or profit or loss, if you like. So, as I mentioned before, You've got three types of investment in debt. So for example, the amortized cost method, the fair value through OCI, and fair value through p and And just a recap for that, if the cash flow includes other bits and pieces, so for example, we've got the options to convert the bond into shares at some point in the future, we have to designate the investment in debt uh, as the fair value through PNO investment in debt. And that means subsequently the price changes would go into the PNO. The reason behind it is because we've got an option to convert them into shares. We care very much about the fair value changes, which means the market price changes. And that's why we're going to be classifying the or recognizing the fair value changes directly into the PL and affecting our net profit in a year. But of course, as I said before, according to his cash flows, if I were to collect the money solely reflect the time value of money concept, that means in the form of interest and principal, I can either classify the investment in debt using the first type or second type which means the amortized cost method or the fair value through p and method. So now let's see the second test. The second test is to test your business model. But please do remember here, business model is not what you think 
you're going to do. But it really depends on your past practice and it really depends on from the uh, strategic point of view of how you're going to manage the asset portfolio. It really depends on your practice and that's very key. And of course, if you're going to buy a debt and your aim is to collect those interest and principal uh, and then held to maturity, for example, you're buying the debt, the debt says three years you can get my interest. I want to collect three year interest. At the end of the third year, I would like to collect the principal. And this means it should be designated as the amortized cost method to measure the investment in debt. So what do I mean by amortized cost? Is to see the net cost or the net gain from the buyer's point of view over the years. So for example, I spend a hundred dollars to buy a bond. A bond will be in two years time. I can collect ten dollars of interest each and every year. At the second year, at the end of the second year, I can get the money back. So first, I spend hundred dollars out. I can get 10 and 10, which means I can get $20 of the interest. I can get $100 back, which means I can get 220 in total. I have to spend, uh, I can get $120 in total. I have to spend $100 now. I spend $100 now, I can get 10 and 10 interest and then $100 of the principal. And that means the net gain to me, to a buyer, will be $20. And then we spread that $20 over the two years, and that means it is the amortized cost method. Okay, so that's how we do it. If you classify your financial assets at amortized costs, you have to recognize the finance income and the interest that you can receive each and every year. So please do check out my article about this topic, where I show you the journal entries for that, and the examples for that, or check out my other video, I provide you with an example of how we go through to calculate or to account for the investments in debt under the amortized cost method. So let's see the second type, is the fair value through OCI or other comprehensive income. So if you can demonstrate in your business model, in an asset portfolio here, part of your asset, you are holding it to maturity, aiming to collect the full amount of interest and also the principal. But at the same time, you're looking at the market. You're looking at the market if there's an opportunity arises. So for example, if the interest rate is quite low and then pushing up your fair value of your debt, and then you like to sell it and to enjoy the capital gain, which means part of them is for trading purposes. If you can demonstrate that, I would say this should be accounted for using the fair value through OCI. And that means you're aiming to collect the full amount of cash for part of the asset in your portfolio, but for part of that, you're selling it. And if this is the case then, you care two things. First, you care the amortized cost stuff, and that's why the journal entries will be just to be the same as in the amortized cost method. And at the same time, you care about the fair value changes. But because in this asset portfolio, you are, you are holding it, you are holding it to maturity. But if there's an opportunity arises, and then you would like to sell it. But if you like to sell it, but you're holding it to maturity, you are adding the other assets back in your portfolio. And that's why it's the fair value changes, you directly put that into the capital reserve or the other comprehensive income rather than affecting the current year's profit. So that's the main idea behind it. And of course, in practice, we often assess whether the business model would be to, uh, to hold it to maturity or for trading purposes, we really to focus on the manager's remuneration of this asset portfolio. If I can conclude that we uh, reward the manager of this asset portfolio 
uh, in the form of uh, bonuses linked with the fair value changes. So for example, if the asset portfolio fair value increases, I can give you 10% of that increase, let's say $1 million times 10% as your bonus. And if this is the case then, I would deem the manager will have incentive to focus on the fair value changes. And perhaps part of that will be for trading purposes. So it is very likely that the business model will involve trading part. And that's why we should account for uh, 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 we should account for it using the fair value method. So to conclude, if I were to buy debt from an other party, whether that debt we should use amortized costs or the fair value. Well, really depends on first of all the cash flows. If the cash flows you can demonstrate has other stuff, you show the fair value changes directly to PL. But if the cash flows are fine, because that's related to the time value of money concept, for example, it's the interest and principal, and you have to identify or you have to assess the business model here. The business model, whether or not it involves the trading part. If that does not involve the trading part, you use the amortized cost method, but that involves the trading part. For example, the manager's performance or the remuneration is linked with the fair value changes. You should account for it using the fair value through OCI. And of course, in my course, I will also touch an irrevocable option for the investment in debt as well. Uh, but uh, that's enough for today's section. I look forward to seeing you in my accounting calls. Bye. APC Accounting for your future.